Well, first of all, his smile. I mean, he has a perfect smile, his charisma behind it. Well, he's kept that big personality, that big smile. He's very passionate about the game of basketball, and he cares about winning, but he also cares about the individuals on our staff and our team. When you see something like that happens, and like your face goes pale, and like it's like, oh my God, you know. When I seen the, their faces, though, I, I was like, something serious happened. You know, we were you know, practicing for, I want to say like 45, almost an hour now. I mean, he was on the court and he was doing very well. I think he dunked the ball and then he came back on defense and he grabbed the rebound. And um, uh, when he grabbed the rebound, it was not the authority that he normally had. Uh, when he rebounds, he's a big man, big hands. He normally grabs the ball and pops it, you know? And when he grabbed it, it's like, uh, and then, so I called him over to me. I said, hey, you okay? And he said, I'm good, I'm good. This is a funny, irking situation that came to my, my heart. And uh, he walked to get some water. Coach was like, we need a, like a water break. And I was like, okay. At the time I was like super, super tired. Like, I don't know why I'm so tired, but. And then he had a seat. I called coach over, coach Enfield over. And I said, hey, uh, Vince don't look right. You know, something didn't look right. And so um, coach walked over to him and uh, asked him if he was okay. Sat down and like, I just got like super dizzy out of nowhere. And then little Gatorade cup in this hand, I think it was filled with orange Gatorade. I think I had a water, water bottle was here. Put it down, sat back, was about to drink my water. I was like, bro, I'm so dizzy. And then I just, that's all I remembered. And I ran over very quickly and uh, our staff, training staff, and they were right there on hand. They started CPR. It just felt like it was in like a dark void. There was like a little thing behind me. I was glowing and it was low-key pushing me in. And I was like, I can't go in, I gotta go out. So I just be yelling at Vince like no other, just like stay awake. It got to a point where I was almost praying inside, but I didn't want them to see or hear me, you know, get to a point where I'm feeling vulnerable and emotional about things. So I was like, you know, just, yelling at him constantly, just wake up, you know, Vince, 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 calling his name constantly. I started hearing like Coach Moby's voice, like, get up Vince, get up Vince, you know, don't die on me, you know what I'm saying? Like in my head, I was like, don't die, what, what does he mean, don't die? <laughs> so I'm like, I gotta get up, gotta get up, gotta get up. He took this big deep breath and this jerky motion when he got shocked and he just, and he just, a big welling, <sighs> and it was just, and that was a, a sign of good sign to me because he was alive and, and starting to breathe on his own. You know, he wanted to get up like immediately off the ground as in like, you know, <laughs> relax, Vince, relax, we okay, you okay, okay, so. Got up, they're telling me to get down and I, like in my mind, I was like, holy crap, I think I know what happened. And when I was rushing to the ambulance, I was like, oh, it's over, I'm not. Like basketball is done for me. Doctors, some doctors telling me like it was done. That was it. I told my mom and dad, it's fine. I don't have to play again. Um, let's focus on school. Um, and 10 minutes later, I started crying. Because it's so hard to leave this game. And I've only played this game for four or five years. But it's given me so much. I've dedicated so much time going to prep schools in the summer, not having a summer because I'm playing basketball, having tournaments, obviously. And for me to, to say, like, it's over, like, you know, like, I, I tried to accept it. Um, but I love the game too much to just do that. I have so much respect for that orange ball <laughs> that um, I'm willing to take whatever recovery road I have to, to to come back and play it. All the necessary precautions, I'm going to do it, you know, because I think this game has more to give to me, and I think I have more to give to the game. For the first month and a half, it went by pretty quickly after you know the whole event happened. And when, when I started like doing physical activities, like getting the bike, weight room, things like that, so that's one time like it was really like slow, cause like we had like a almost like a set date, you know, somewhere in November, um, come back. And when November hit, every day felt like a week. So I felt like I went through a decade of waiting 
in just two weeks. And even after I got cleared to do like more basketball activities, it still felt like an eternity to get back on the court. The mentally, like it wore me down, thinking like if I'm ever gonna come back or if I if I come back, am I gonna be the same? What if it happens again? Like every every bad thought you could think about ran through my head. So mentally, like it was tough in those seven months more than it was physically. I appreciate all the training staff, the coaching staff for, you know, doing what they did. Jay Wild has been like like the cornerstone man, like my guy. Ever since it happened, shoot all all my problems I'm like, Jay Wild, Jay Wild, Jay Wild, Jay Wild, Jay Wild. John Yonamini, our trainer, and the women trainers we have here in the Galen Center do a tremendous job every day. They don't get recognized as much as they should. They're with our athletes nonstop. When I walk in the training room, I'll see men and women athletes here in the five sports at the Galen Center in there all the time. They really do an amazing job, not only keeping our players healthy, but when something happens, they do therapy. And then when something serious happens, like in Vince's case, they're ready to respond immediately. We've we've had a, like a close bond, like really close bond um, from the whole event happening. This whole seven months of getting back, they've had to deal with me for seven months. So now, like I, I can't thank you know them enough for what they did. Well, that's what doctors and trainers do, and and the medical profession doesn't get a lot of credit sometimes. The doctors and trainers behind the scenes uh, just do incredible work, and they're so valuable to it. It's not only our team, but every every team here at USC. I mean, they're superheroes. I mean, like, they're the definition of superheroes. I, like, superheroes save people's lives, and that's what they did. Hearing the crowd clap when I got into the game is something I never thought would happen. I think I would think that happens, like, when NBA legends plan to retire and it's their last game. I don't know if he's on TV. I was trying to act, like, calm. I was like, act like I didn't, like, see it. But I was like, I was like, damn, that's crazy. It was exciting for me as a coach uh, to know what he's been through physically and mentally. And it was just a great accomplishment to see him leave the bench, go to the scorer's table and go in the game. He was very anxious, very nervous, and uh, very excited. He played like that. He uh, was out there with a lot of energy and emotion. It's tough. Um, I feel sure, like the first game was like for me to get my jitters out. I won't lie to you. Like I know everyone's supposed to be focused on the game, but I was really focused on like, man, like I'm actually like out here playing basketball again. The walk from the bench to the uh, scores table was felt like an eternity. When I was getting, when I got into the game, walked to, going to the free throw line, I felt like it was forever. But as soon as the ball was played, everything felt fast. We're about to see the USA debut of Vincent Iwuchukwu, the seven foot one freshman from San Antonio. Like a minute later, I was like, oh, I'm on the bench again. <laughs> I think I, after that game, it was more like feeling like part of my journey is kind of is, is complete. It was a long seven months. It was kind of like a uh, checkpoint when I got into the game. This is a big moment. And I'm probably gonna have another, you know, difficult moment in my life. And, but it was celebratory for me to be on that court. It was built through all the times I've been in the gym, all the time I spent in the training room, all the time I spent in the hospital. I'm talking to doctors, my parents. It was all, it was all a day by day, you know, type of thing. It was a joy having my family here. That was probably the best moment of the year. It's probably going to be the best moment of the year, unless we win, you know, March Madness, unless we win the whole thing. A lot of tears were shed throughout, you know, the past couple of months. And to have that joyful moment meant a lot. You don't get those all the time. Before everything happened, I took moments like that for granted, but that was something I'm never going to forget. Anytime a team goes through something like this, it brings them closer together. And obviously Vince was uh, such a, he's such a dynamic person with a big personality and everybody loves him. You're just grateful that he's able to be here today and have another opportunity to play basketball. Fighting for the past seven months has made me stronger than I've ever been. It's so rare for someone to say like, oh, I came back from this and now I'm playing. I'm more grateful for the game than I've ever been. <laughs>